Ya, yeah, you start. Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Uh, good morning to all uh, distinguished guests. Welcome to webinar session of the Higher Education Virtual Expo 2021. With me here today is Chigu Asfadillah Isham, Deputy Principal of Cosmopolitan College of Commerce and Technology, and Chigu Rajita Ranawira, Deputy Manager of Cosmopolitan College of Commerce and Technology. So they will be presenting on a topic called Education for Different Types of Learners. There will be a 10-minute session for question and answer at the end of the session. You can also type your question at the chat area and we will try our best to answer your question at the end of the session. So, okay, Chigo, if you may. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to the listeners and viewers of today's webinar. Uh, to proceed with uh, this session, I would like again to introduce myself. I'm, my name is Asfadila Isham bin Haji Salim. Uh, Deputy Principal of Cosmopolitan College, uh, who also will be uh, this session's moderator. Okay, with me here on my right hand side uh, is a fellow colleague of mine, Mr. Rajita Ranawira. Uh, as a quick, inter uh, quick introduction, uh, Mr. Raj is uh, the head of quality and operations of Cosmopolitan College. He has done his master's in business administration and has more than 10 years experience in education in South and Southeast Asia. Okay, so to start off with our topic today, okay, which is education in uh, education for different types of learners, which is quite interesting if you ask me, because the realities and the approaches have been cha changing over the years. Okay. Uh, we teachers, lecturers have been pursuing uh, the perfect balance of differentiation and strategies okay, where all learners are able to reach their full potential. Definitely, Mr. Raj, uh, have some ideas and perhaps some uh, shareable strategies for our teaching staffs out there. Okay, all right. Um, so let's dive straight right into, the, into this webinar. Okay. First question, Mr. Raj, uh, what is learning style uh, and why is it important? Yes, okay. So if we take a normal person, there are uh, five different senses that they can uh, understand the world around us. Like we hear things, we see things, we taste, we touch and feel things. So there are different ways. So from the birth up until we die, we use these senses to understand what is happening around us and you know get adapted to it you get adapted you survive you thrive if you don't get adapted you will go out you will get uh, you know beaten by your competition and everything so we have these different senses showing us giving us letting us feel so many different things uh, that is happening around us but each and every one of us are good at or are different on how we process this information that is given to us and how we internalize it. So learning styles are mostly referring to what is the most effective and most productive way a person understands things happening around us. So some are good at understanding things by looking at things. Likewise, there are many different ways that we can understand but what is the most effective and most productive way is that person's individual learning style and why this is important this is important in so many ways like we have to learn new things we have to uh, you know uh, proceed to learn so many things if you want to improve our life if you think of your younger days like when you are doing your school days thinking of how you hated looking at textbooks and how you, you know, uh, struggled with your life to understand what's written in and think of, okay, if I knew my best way of learning things is something different and I had the ability to convert the things which are coming in different, different forms into my preferred way of learning, how fun learning could have been. 
and how helpful it will be it will be in your career throughout your life so learning style is our preferred way of understanding things internalizing things and why it is important is that it makes life learning improvement growth fun and more effective all right okay that's very um, very interesting answer and i think even even myself i mean i remember when i was studying having those textbook with 200 300 pages is very very difficult <laughs> to yeah. understand but that's why i think this understanding this different methods of learning styles is going to be very very helpful not just for students but also for teachers as well i can give you one example from uh, you know you know my studying time mm -hmm. right uh, when i sit for a lecture that right, i do not traditionally uh, take down notes mm -hmm. fortunately i have stumbled upon it and i practiced it but not because i was fully aware of learning styles uh, but what i do is while listening to the lecture while looking at the notes i create my own mind map which is full filled of full, filled with details which only i can understand <laughs> but true, true. it it covers the entire session in one a4 sheet and it makes perfect sense to me and it makes learning fun for me and the challenge and the satisfaction i get after the oh i have done everything now i understand it is really amazing sure 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 okay interesting as well all right um following up to the first question uh, can you tell us uh, the different types of learning styles available out there yeah now what are the different types of learning styles is a long debated uh, uh, set, uh, area of uh, studies every day we are coming up with different ideas but when you consider all those things broadly we can identify four types of uh, uh, learning styles okay. one is visual learners the individuals who like to see things and learn through things it can be a infographic it can be a chart it can be any other illustration mm -hmm. they would like to see things and understand things through seeing it then another group of individuals would like to listen uh, learn things through hearing they would like to listen to someone talking they would like to hear some uh, a podcast or a recorded audio mm. so that they can understand things grasp things clearly by carefully listening okay. so be sure listening third one is uh, the verbal learners they can understand things by reading it out telling it to someone speaking it out and finally we have kinetic learners they are they would like to do stuff try things break things apart you take assume you want to explain how a particular product works how a computer works kinetic learners would like to break it apart they want to touch feel operate and see and learn while visual learners will look at a circuit diagram or a Uh, illustration of how the computer works and will have a equal understanding about how product works so what we need to understand when it comes to learning styles is it's not that one is better than the other each are equally effective if that is your preferred style of learning when you when you try to push something which is not you and now the trouble starts most of the time uh, people say okay you have to draw a mind map oh. and you must draw a mind map you must do this and now trouble starts because that might be the way that person likes to learn but is that the right way you would like to learn that's a question if it's not you will find learning very uh, uh, very uh, boring and sometimes very very stressful right but if you learn how i can relate it to myself or my preferred style then things can be fun all right um definitely okay so just to summarize what you have mentioned in terms of different learning styles we have uh through hearing which is auditory for me if i'm wrong uh, we have the visual uh we have Uh, we have the kinetic which is more towards practical learning and everything 
And then we also have verbal. Yes. Okay, verbal. So definitely when we're talking about kinetics, uh, like what you have mentioned, basically what a student or a teacher need to be doing is some, some reverse engineering of a particular topic so that they are able to do it themselves. Yes. Okay. Um, very interesting points and everything. So I would like to continue with the question. Sure. All right. Would you like to, uh, would you care to tell us on how understanding these different types uh, of learning style will be useful for teachers and students? Okay. okay. First, I will start from the student's point of view because we all were once a student, right? Uh, Picking up what is your learning style will give you the best and the most probable chance of learning many things with minimum effort. So you need to figure out what works for you. The moment a student works out what works for me, how I can convert things that I get from different different sources into my preferred way of learning, then you can put same amount of effort or even lesser amount of effort, but it will create much productive outcome. That is from the student side. But let's talk about uh, the teacher's uh, perspective because it's important. The first thing that I realized that uh, when I learn about learning styles, when I study, when I explore about learning styles is accepting the fact that my students can have different learning styles and it could be different from how I learn gives me a realization of I need to improve myself, mm -hmm. I, I need to change myself of how we approach things, right? So the, that, that, that change of perspective is the, the first major uh, step forward that teachers can have with their understanding on different learning styles. Okay, now then how it will be helpful in actual delivery. Now we know teachers have to create session plans, then uh, details of how we deliver different content or different sections of the, uh, the, the learning outcomes to the students uh, in a given specific uh, time uh, period uh, when we deliver sessions. So what we can do is that we can plan our sessions where yeah, it will be helpful for different learning styles to understand what we are delivering. It's impossible might be to deliver all four learning styles at once. Yeah. But if you take, for an example, 40 minute or one hour session, and if we can carefully plan how I can separate this, how I can incorporate different tools and techniques that I have, which will be applicable for all four types of learning, then you can make your session much more productive and much more effective. And the internalization of your content will be much higher than any, any traditional one directional uh, lecture. True, true. So, I mean, uh, for, especially for teachers or lecturers, having just one style, one learning style to, to provide to the students is will definitely bring issues, a yeah, lot of course. issues. Of course. So, uh, there, are, no, uh, there yeah. are many cases, even uh, each one of us might have personal experiences where we hated one module, we hated one uh, subject. For an example, the common, common experience I have is many students don't like to learn statistics, don't like to learn maths sometimes hate accounting, right? Ma majority of the time, we, when we look at why this happens, what we understand is that, okay, there are certain uh, predefined uh, ideas, okay, accounting should be taught like this. So then sometimes students, it doesn't fit into uh, different students' learning styles and it, it, it uh, creates things difficult. Now, there are poor learning styles. It, it means probabilistically, uh, there should be 25% of students falling into each, each style, style in, right? So assume we teach accounting in a, a way that it only applicable or it only uh, uh, effective towards visual learn, learners, then it's only 25%. Mm -hmm. 
there is 75% of students who might not get connected to this dialogue. So by accepting that and combining this, you can take difficult subjects, subjects that students typically don't like to study to la uh, majority of the students and make it make learning fun. Learning fun. All right. Um, maybe on to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mind sharing with us, uh, with the rest of us here, what are the methods uh, of teaching used by Cosmo, Cosmo lecturers? Yeah, of course. Now, going into the, the topic that we just discussed, how, may, uh, how we can make uh, teaching fun. Uh, for an example, typical subjects which students find, you know, looking from us boring mm -hmm. or tough or stressful to learn. One great example that I can give you is that the board game that we use to teach accounting. Yes, accounting in traditional teaching method is a very uh, difficult subject to learn unless you are a Sometimes we would say geek. Oh. Right? Uh, many students find it struggling to understand accounting and how the financial systems and financial uh, pro pro procedures work. But what we do in Cosmopolitan, for an example, is we converted it into something interesting, something which can which can appeal to all four learning styles. We converted it into a, 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 a game, board game, where visual learners can see things. They can see where the cash is, where they can see the flow of cash going from uh, revenue to expenses. So they can see things and learn. Kinetic learners can touch and move pieces here and there. They can touch and feel, oh, this pile is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, while this pile is getting smaller and smaller. They can see there is a, a potential amount of money that is there but have to wait because it's given on credit it takes some time for them to touch and feel it so kinetic learners will feel it auditory learners visual learners different kind of learners they learn it simply because we took the idea of accounting and we convert it into a game which is applicable for many uh, 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 different types of students who have different types of learning styles and another example that I can give you is that the use of technology, right? Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things that we are uh, very keen on uh, in Cosmopolitan College is to bring in technology into the classroom to make learning fun. Concepts like uh, virtual reality and, uh, you know, uh, there, there are thousands of, you know, online sources available where we can find content that is relevant for our modules, but created in different, different formats, which is applicable for different, different learning styles. The world is full of resources. It's a matter of finding what they are and finding what is more convenient, more effective, and more suitable for our students and bring it in. So gaming is a very popular strategy, not only in <laughs> colleges, but also everywhere among the, uh, the, the, the industry to gain uh, uh, student, uh, any, get people to involve with things. Now, look, we can see students playing hours and hours of game, games. Sure. If we can get those principles and apply into our classroom learning, we can get their undivided attention. We can get their most productive attention to teach them something that will really help them. So gamification, use of technology, and uh, get the help of uh, resources, both physical and online, are some of the very effective and false proven uh, techniques that we are using even in Cosmopolitan College, in order to uh, address different learning styles. Another important thing is how we conduct our classes, right? Yes. Now, you can also testify to that because we both are teaching our students. Yes. We are getting a range of students from level one to level five. So, uh, we try to 
create a different learning environment support in classrooms, right? Uh, we, we do not arrange our classroom layouts, which are typical one directional discussions. We create space for students to move through. And I cannot think of any situation where our uh, facilitators, we call ourselves facilitators, yes. right? Our facilitators will conduct a one hour session where they talk 55 minutes of talking and uh, students just by the end sit of the, and listen yes. whether they really understood. Talking is important because auditory is one learning side. Yeah. But we need to think of it's only 25%. Exactly. What about the other 75? So we have to, you know, mix and match, give some uh, presentation, give some uh, group activities, give some classroom uh, activities where they can get up, move, touch, feel and learn. That, that will include in the kinetics uh, learning style, which exactly. they, they, their own, have to do it themselves. Exactly. Uh, especially in terms of the gamifications, all the game styles. Yes, I think uh, everyone have, uh, I think everyone agree that we have been, uh, I think for more than 20 years, more than 30 years, everyone have heard about the game Monopoly. Hmm. So that Monopoly game, board game, definitely helps, especially for business students, where how to manage resources, how, how can we get more money, how can we get more revenue, how we can manage our expenses, all those things. Yeah, what, what, what uh, I can tell you another experience. So there are no black and white tools. There are no tools which are 100% bad or 100% good. Everything has some good side and bad side. We as teachers, we as facilitators need to identify what are the good side or what are the positives of certain tools, what are the negatives, how we can bring these tools to our students in such a way that they will get the benefits of the positives, but they will not get hurt by the negatives of those students. All right, so, um, all right, so perhaps uh, this will be another question. Uh, the last question, perhaps, okay. How will having this, uh, understanding this learning styles can help individual in their work life? And how do you think companies might be benefit from understanding they, that there are these different learning styles available? Okay, uh, before answering this question, uh, one, one thing that I would like to tell you is that as teachers, one of the greatest gifts that we can give our students, one among many, is help them identify what's their preferred learning style and help them to improve it. I'll tell you why. Because if you look at the industry as well, right? if you think of 10, 20 years back, or if you look at your father's time, right? you will see that they can learn one thing and they can live their life depending on that thing that they have learned in the school or in the university. I have seen many uh, parents or individuals who have done their degree and they're retiring at the age of 60, 65, haven't done anything else but thriving on the things that they have learned at that level. That's possible those days, but not now, because we are living in so-called VUCA environment, VUCA volatile, uncertain, complex environment where things are changing super fast. The things that we learn today take business, business environment. The things that we learn today will not be different, uh, will be different tomorrow. Exactly. Right? Yes. Technology, super fast changing. So it's impossible, especially the younger generation who are studying at this very moment, to learn something and stop learning after school and hoping to survive the rest of their professional life from the, what they have learned in the school. They have to learn more. They have to learn new things. They have to continue. That is why we, we are talking about lifelong learning, right? Lifelong learning. So how we can train a student to be lifelong, uh, how we can be, uh, how we can train a student to be lifelong learning 
simply by making them realize how they can learn things with minimum effort. Simple as that. It's a it's a matter of economics. Okay, right. If you have to put more resources into something, it's not worth doing it. That is the general idea. So when people think that they have to put lots and lots of effort, it can be time, it can be money, it can be other resources, time spent with your family, time spent with your friends. They tend to not do that. What learning style do is that they give you a more efficient way of doing something. So economics works in your favor. All right. Right? Okay. So uh, if you if the students know how to learn, how to study by themselves, by developing habits which feeds into their learning style. Very true. Very true. That, that is the most important. Sense. Develop habits which falls into your learning style. Ah, then you can be a lifelong learner and very good at being that. If you think of our success, your success, my success, all depends on how well we make learning a habit of us. Right? So that is one side for the individuals. You, If you want to develop the career, if you want to progress in your life, if you want to go high in the organizational hierarchy, in the next decade, in the ne next century, you have to be continuously learning. On the other hand, if you think of companies, now we are talking about learning organizations. Yes. The simple question is how you can create a learning organization without learning individuals. Understanding the individuals. Yeah. And if now, if our, our bodies consist of cells, if cells cannot generate energy, if, if our organs cannot work in, in, uh, you know, by themselves, how we can work as a body, right? Similarly, if employees of an organization doesn't learn, how can we as an organization learn? So organizational learning depends on individuals in that organization learning. So remember, your ability to learn will be one of the decisive factors of whether you are cut above the rest when it comes to your next job interview or when you are facing your care. So teachers can think of improving your students and uh, learning ability. And that is how we achieve a lot of success in Cosmopolitan College. On the other hand, students can think of, this is one of the lifelines of my career development. So by doing all that, we will be able to create better youth, better uh, workforce to take the Bruna towards its development goals. And it's learning style, and learning uh, understanding and facilitating learning uh, styles, I think is a major uh, contributor for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also have one, one question from uh, from uh, people who's viewing this webinar, all right, maybe we can answer this particular question. Um, how can you relate? I mean, in Cosmopolitan, we have different levels of courses uh, that we provided. So definitely these different levels of courses have different, uh, I mean, multiple intelligence in terms of uh, students' capabilities. So how can you relate this multiple intelligence? How can you relate with this different learning style? Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> to answer this question, how uh, multiple intelligence and learning styles work together, uh, what I think is that these are two different things which, in a way, connected to each other. Right? Uh, intelligence is mostly referring to how, uh, how you process things in your mind, in your brain, how you see the things, that connections, that uh, normally not visible or not understandable. So how you see deeper connections in the things that you know, things that you understand is broadly, broadly can be defined as intelligence. Learning style, on the other hand, refers to how we can best capture the knowledge existing around us. So 
how we connect these together is that okay it's like learning styles the, the right learning style will help us capture the most important and probably more information more effectively which will feed into deep analysis in your internally which will focus on your uh, intelligence uh, but my advice to you uh, who have asked this question is that even though there are students in different intelligence level there is no scientific uh, evidence available to say okay intelligent people will have most probably this learning style not the other learning style if you look at many intelligent and famous individuals what you see is that some are very good at looking at things and learning uh, some are very good at uh, listening to things and learning auditory some are very good at doing things and learning so uh, helping them understand what is the most preferred way of their learning will actually irrespective of uh, uh, how uh, how in which level of their intelligence is will improve the overall uh, capabilities of that individual Definitely, I think uh, based on my just now what uh, when we introduced this webinar, I think I also have mentioned uh, that so far, I mean, over the years, lecturers, facilitators, teachers have been having a, bit, a little bit of difficulty uh, in terms of finding the perfect blend of strategies. Because I, I understand that every year you will get different types of students. Hmm. So on to my next question for you, I mean, uh, from your based on your experience, how long do you need to understand, maybe it related to the questions from uh, our viewers, how long do you need to understand the, the student's capabilities, the student's uh, intelligence le level for you to find the right learning styles to use in that? Uh, it's very important. Right? Uh, what I feel is that teachers, in 21st century should be more observers than, you know, uh, or, or you should observe equally uh, like you teach, mm -hmm. you uh, transfer knowledge because you understand your students more, you will be able to adjust yourself to the student more. So to answer your question, right, it's very important that you put enough effort or adequate effort to understand students, if possible, each and every student. Then you will be able to figure out, right, what are the different types of learning styles available. If you take a class of 20 students, I'm not saying there will be a right, perfect balance of each learning style. Some classes are there where there is mostly visual learning. Yes. Some classes are there where it's mostly uh, auditory learning. But sometimes there is a balance. So first we need to figure out what's the balance. Then also we need to look, figure out, okay, uh, especially related to the previous question also, what are the different intelligence levels or what is the different, I would like to put this capab capability levels. Uh, and the most important, you have to bring it to your planning sessions. Session planning, activity planning, grouping of students, you have to bring those understanding into those tools, then only you can get a reasonable outcome out. So that, to do that, you have to understand your students and that is very... Uh... Okay, so we also have uh basically a continuation from the questions of multiple intelligence relating to learning styles. Okay, uh, what if, for example, an individual who has a dominant uh, logical intelligence, okay, can, can apply this uh, kinetic style of learning? Uh, to my understanding, my exposure, my experience, and if you look at throughout the history, there are very logical scholars very logical uh, 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 individuals who had different styles of learning. I'll give you one great example. Take Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. He's one of the greatest minds in the 21st century. But he imagined his uh, special relative, uh, uh, relativity uh, through visuals. 
He imagined riding with the light beam. He imagined you are stuck on an elevator, and he said that is his greatest or happiest thought. That, that the, ele uh, the, the elevator was falling down, free fall, right? So he is one of the greatest minds who came up with one of the most sophisticated, most complicated ideas of the 21st century, but he completely look at things in visuals. And there can be others uh, who have looked at things kinetically by doing things, great explorers, great uh, scientists, great, great scholars who would like to touch and feel things and learn and their explanations or their, their findings also touch and feel. All right, uh, so basically. So basically, my, what I'm saying is that um, there is no hard and fast rule saying this type of intelligence should go with this type of learning style. Mm. It's a mix and match. Any intelligent person, any person with different intelligence uh, levels can have any one of these four learning, uh, learning styles. You have the most important thing for the teachers is you need to figure out what it is, how I can help both the intelligence development as well as uh, improving the learning style. Maybe from the student side as well, they have to be uh, agree that they could not have only one style. Yeah, only. definitely. Nobody, as I told you, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying uh, one will have, okay, definitely I am kinetic. I will never hear a uh, word hereafter. No, can't be. All four will be there, but one will be more productive and more efficient than the other. So if you want to learn continuously, you should always go back to your most preferred mm -hmm. style, but it doesn't mean you have to abandon the rest. Like for example, an IT student who is very, very preferred to use uh, verbal learning style will somewhat will have a difficulty in terms of learning IT courses because most of IT courses are more kinetic, mm -hmm. more practical and everything. So he or she should not abandon that, that, uh, that style. Yes. Also, my, my, if I find a student like that, my advice to them is learn how to convert. Okay. Learn how to convert into your preferred style. Learn how to do coding in a visual way. There are plenty of star examples. Now, I have uh, seen this uh, uh, coding game where you learn the basic coding principles by drawing. Drawing. Okay. Um, it's good for visual learners. They can see and they can code, they can draw things, and by doing that, they are learning. So that is how visual learn the, 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 the content was developed for visual learners to learn something hardly taught visual in the classes. So it's a matter of teacher identifying such you know helpful tools and direct our students sources. towards that. Um, so I yeah. think, yeah, uh, I think we, we are almost at the end of our webinar. All right, yeah. all right. Um, so those are some Sorry interesting. To um, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have a few questions though. Yes. From, from myself, okay? Sorry. Yeah, sure, no problem. Go ahead. We have like two minutes. Uh, so uh, is there any um, like facilities for special needs students? Sorry? Is there any like facilities or a cater for this special needs student? Yes, uh, uh, within our uh, uh, given uh, uh, approvals and we given our uh, uh, context, yes, we have uh, facilities for uh, special uh, requ uh, required students because we understand that not everyone will be comfortable with learning in uh, certain mechanisms, some can have uh, hearing impairments, or sometimes people can have uh, anxiety in moving with people. So let's say for the sake of uh, helping students, we put a lot of group work and we put a person who is uh, anxious to work with others into the, uh, the mix, then uh, instead of uh, learning, they will be stressed and not learning because they are uh, stressed about the situation. So yes, we have 
uh, special uh, uh, processes, uh, facilities, and uh, individuals placed in not only identifying, then facilitating special needs within our uh, school. Yes. Okay, so I think for answering the questions, uh, another question uh, is the teacher is the teacher being trained to uh, assist in this special student? Are they being trained? Uh, if uh, with, uh, again uh, means within our school, because there are certain areas that uh, we we will not handle because we need special training trained facilitators to do that. But within our scope, yes, our uh, lecturers are continuously going through learning and development practices to uh, learn how we can handle them and uh, qualify the uh, qualifications. Uh, we are uh, we, we we are making sure that the the our our faculty is capable and trained and qualified to handle them within our scope. But there are some cases that uh, which we are not capable. In that case, we we. we guide them for the right uh, education institute which can which have the capability and the uh, competency to handle them uh, than being unfair to them and get them okay. is there any question uh, other questions so i think uh, based on our experience we do have this special requirement students um, so far, we have been fairly successful in terms of uh, getting the right educations for these students, uh, mostly through understanding these different learning styles. Yes. So, if, uh, if there are no other questions, okay, so those are very interesting answers that came up from our very own subject matter. Okay, so we hope that... <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, very much to our uh, fellow panel for the useful uh, insights and yes. hopefully everyone can get something from it. Uh, yes. So thank you all for joining this morning webinar session of the Higher Education Export Mini 2021. The next session will be at 2 p.m. Thank you and assalamu alaikum. Thank, thank you.